Hello everyone and welcome back to our skill system series in UE4. In the previous episode we set up our tooltips and from there we're going to work on adding the ability to set up prerequisites so that when I purchase my engineer's mind it unlocks my locksmith one and I can't purchase my locksmith one until I've purchased the engineer's mind. So we're making a prerequisite requirement for one of your skills. So let's go ahead and do that. So for this, we're going to go into the skill button UI and we're going to add a new variable in here called prerequisite. The type for this is going to be a string and that string is going to refer to a particular skill in our skill data table. We're going to make that editable so we can change it and set it when we're building the interface. So let's click compile and let's go into our skill window. So as I said, I want to make locksmith here, my lock one, not be purchasable until this one has been purchased. So repair needs to be typed into my prerequisite here. So I'm going to go repair and push enter. So now I'm going to make it so the locksmith can't be clicked until it checks that repair has been added to my skill system. Hit compile and close that. Go back to your skill button and we'll go into the graph. Now we need to do this in two areas. First of all, we need to do it in the click of the button and we also need to do it in the update tint. So let's save some time and make a function in here. So in here, we're going to be check prereq it. And the prerequisite here is going to have an output whether or not it is successful or not. So output here, new output, and we'll call it um, uh, requirements met. And that'd be a boolean because it's either going to be true or false. So the prerequisite is going to check the string we just made. Let's get that. And we need to check it against this skill system on the player character. Now we've already got a reference to the player character, so that's pretty simple. Just drag that out and choose get. And then we're going to get the skill system from there. From there, we can use the query function that we made way back in episode two. So we can do query skill. And we're going to query this skill. And if it's successful, we're going to turn the success on. Now we only want this to be the case if prerequisite has a value. So let's put, stretch this out a little bit here and check the prerequisite value here. So prerequisite out, get, and we'll check if it's equal to nothing. So we're going to go if it is not equal to and leave it blank. meaning nothing. True will go into what we've previously done. If it is false, meaning A is empty, we're going to make it meet the requirements as well. So you can still purchase it, even if it doesn't have a prerequisite. And click compile. Now we've done that, we can close that down and go into our event graph. So let's now add that to our various things here. So on my on clicked here, we're not just checking the perk points, but we're also checking the prerequisite as well. So drag your function to check prerequisite, and that goes in right at the start. And if the check prerequisite is true, then it'll carry on. So from there, we're gonna do a branch and go into true there. We're also going to do it on the update tint. So on here, we've got update tint checking this and this, and it will only go to the yellow being available if the requirements are met for these. We also want to add the requirements met for that function. So check prerequisite out. And on the and, we're going to add a pin to it and drag the requirements met to it and connect that all up. You may want to tidy this up a little bit so it doesn't look too messy, like so. Hit compile. So now let's check that out in the game. 
So as you can see, Locksmith here is unavailable to purchase. When I click on here, it now becomes available to purchase. So that's all well and good, but we need to tell the tooltip to update with that requirements at the bottom of its uh, tooltip. So let's do that tooltip notification there. So we've got this restriction text that will appear right at the bottom in red. I'm just going to put a little padding on it actually on the top here. Padding of 20. There we go. And we're going to set that value here based on the prerequisite that is required. So on the graph, we need to slip in the requirements for this uh, skill. So to do that, the easiest way of doing that is going onto your skill button. And on here, we're going to on the construct, after we've added the tooltip, we're going to drag my tooltip uh, reference out, get, and we're going to get requirement, uh, sorry, restriction text, and set text for it. So we're going to set the text for it here. Okay, and the text is going to be here. We're going to do a format text. And the text is going to be requires and then curly bracket skill name. Close curly bracket. And the skill name it requires is going to come from the data table using the prerequisite string to find that information. So let's give ourselves some more space here. Drag the prerequisite out, choose get, type in data table, and uh, might be better off if you don't drag it in. Let's do data table. Anyway, get data table row, that's it. And plug in that there. Choose your data table. And row found, we're going to set text. And out row, we're going to split and drag in our row name into school name. Click compile. And let's have a look at that in game. So now if I hover over the locksmith one, you can see it now says requires engineer's mind. Click on here and we can now purchase it. Once we've got it unlocked though, we want to hide that requires the engineer's mind. So let's go into our skill button UI. Go to the graph and let's go check prerequisite function. And when the query skill has come out true, not only are we going to output true, but we're going to change the tooltip for that uh, restriction text. So drag in get my tooltip and then get restriction text and then set text to nothing. And that'll clear it. Apologies, we also need to set up a branch. So put the branch in success there. So it only does it if it's true. And then the success will go off into requirements met. And we want the return node to also be on the false. To success there as well. Hit compile and push play. And now it will show required engineer's mind. I purchase engineer's mind. And that requirement has now gone away. And there you have it. And that kind of brings us to the end of the uh, skill system. The only thing left you really have to do is set up where you earn perk points and where you want to put in your skill uh, um, skill checks and your query skills. That's totally down to you and the skills you have inside your game. If you have any particular weird skills and not too sure how to implement them, leave a comment below and I'll try and get back to you. And if it becomes a common thing, I'll make a video as an extra uh, part to this series. Other than that, thank you very much for watching this. If you've enjoyed this series, please, please, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you subscribe to my Patreon, you get access to many more videos. And if you're a gold Patreon, you can get access to these uh, project files right now as well. Thank you to everyone for watching this entire series, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everyone.